It is my joy and privilege to welcome you to yet another night in our Holy Spirit week. What a week it has been so far, and tonight is no exception. As we look at kingdom blessings of the new covenant, tonight our presenter, Elder Garfield Dorr, is one of our elders here at the Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. Tonight he speaks on the topic, Blessings on the Meek. I invite you to invite your family and friend to join us as we share in this experience. God bless you as you listen to the word of God. The theme of the Bible is Jesus and how he died to save men. The plan of salvation assures us he's coming back. to come Are you faithful in all that you do Have you fought a good fight Have you stood for the right Do others see Jesus in you
Good evening once again as I join the pastor in welcoming you to another evening as we look at the Beatitudes. We want to say thank you to the brethren and everyone tuned in. You have done the right thing to hear the word of God, which is so important in our lives today. Again this evening, the Beatitude we will be looking at is the meek, as the message is entitled, Blessings on the Meek, and it was prepared by Sister Sanaida K. McKenzie, the treasurer of the North Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Let's look at this very wonderful word, contrary to how the world uh, looks at it. We look at it from God's perspective. Dear Father, thank you for guiding us to understand the character you want us to have through these readings and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The main text comes from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. The theme, Kingdom Blessings of the New Covenant, highlights the Beatitudes found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. The Beatitudes is a part of the Sermon on the Mount, which contains ethical and religious teachings. The term Beatitude is derived from the Latin beati, meaning to be blessed or to be happy. The Beatitudes inform that people are blessed even in hard times, because they look forward to the hope of receiving eternal life in heaven with Jesus when he comes. We are also blessed now, even now, for having noble qualities such as being meek, merciful, righteous, pure, and peaceable. Tonight we will be focusing on blessing on the meek as amplified in the life of Hannah, one of the wives of a man named Elkanah, as she demonstrate meekness even during a time, a period of great adversity. Among the Bible women that were described as barren are Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Elizabeth, which was John the Baptist's mother, and Hannah, who would, who would later get a child and further get, be blessed with other children, the woman we are focusing on tonight. Of Hannah, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 4 through 7, And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did from year to year, when they went up to the house of the Lord, Penena provoked Hannah. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. When it said Penena provoked Hannah, it meant that she provoked, she harassed, she mocked, she made joke of Hannah because Hannah could not have any children. Obviously, this shows us a difference between these two ladies in that Hannah was meek, whereas Penena did not know about meekness. Hannah was hurting, and the hurt was deep. She wanted so desperately to be a mother, and like Penena, she wanted to hold a baby, put the baby to sleep, and sing and play with the baby. Motherhood is a special privilege and a sacred duty because children are from God and he gives them the responsibility to bring them up to know the Lord and worship the Lord and serve the Lord. That's why it's a sacred duty. Think about the role a mother plays in the nurture and development of a child. The unconditional support she gives to that child throughout the life really defines that role. One, she loves her child. Two, she understands her child. And three, she supports her child unreservedly, meaning wholeheartedly, entirely, with totality. 
A mother's love is special and unique. Her duty is to raise the child to follow and serve God. When one becomes a mother, she focuses less on herself, and instead she is growing more and more like Jesus, loving sacrificially and teaching the little one to do the same thing. And the same thing was said of Jesus as found in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, where it says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So as Joseph and Mary trained up Jesus, he grew in wisdom and respect for God and for humanity around him, his fellow human beings. To add insult to injury, Penena, the husband's second wife, triumphed in her fruitfulness, yet she was Hannah's adversary because in spite of Hannah's barrenness, not able to bear children at the moment, she, Hannah, received the larger portion of the husband's love. Pardon me, Penena received the larger portion of the husband's love. Hannah, extremely upset by the taunts of her rival Penena, wept with sheer exasperation. The natural response to someone who taunts you is to retaliate. But Hannah used the situation to demonstrate an admirable amount of meekness. So as Hannah provoked, scorned, made fun of, teased, uh, as Penena did all those things to Hannah, Hannah maintained godly self-control, love, and respect for God, for her husband, and even for her adversary Penena. Again, Penena's behavior, all that provoking and mocking and teasing, shows that Penena did not have meekness. For the first time as I went over this reading, and as many times as I have read about uh, Elkanah and his situation with these two ladies, something came to my mind for the first time in all these years. Penena, obviously, was a bad example for her children. And it made me wonder how her children looked at her. Did they follow her uh, disrespect for Hannah? Or as young children, did they kind of restrain, not knowing what was going on? But obviously, Penena was a bad example for her children, the way she treated Hannah. While research indicates that meekness is probably the least admirable quality in America today, until now, Jesus, the greatest person who ever lived, was himself meek and lowly as, in this, as indicated in the scriptures in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. It is good to be meek because this reading tells us when you are meek, you will be at peace. You will be at rest with God and yourself. Most things wouldn't trouble you so easily causing stress. The passages goes on. Let us not confuse meekness with weakness. Meekness is a virtue that draws courage, strength, conviction, and a good disposition from God, not from self-centeredness and human resources. The passage goes on to say that in vain Elkanah tried to give Hannah comfort. However, in this case, the husband really is not better than ten sons, as he said to his wife Hannah in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, verse 8. Because the joy of motherhood is quite distinct from that of marital affection, and especially when a Hebrew woman back in the Israelite economy was barren. Because you see, within the economy of Israel, especially 
A woman having a child, especially a male child, which they wanted and hoped to get, was the guarantee that she would have food, shelter, and security at whatever point that the husband might die. So having a son or a few sons, uh, that mother was comforted after the husband's death that she will be taken care of. So in the Israelite economy, the women really wanted to at least have a son or two. Hannah was desperate, and in her desperation, she did the best thing she could do. She went to the temple to pray. Observe how prayer works in the life of a person who seeks to cultivate meekness. Prayer is the power that enables us to go, our nat to go beyond our natural inclination. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Why do we pray? We pray, we turn to prayer because it is the most personal way to experience God, to encounter him, and to grow in the knowledge of him. God's desire is for us to pray on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and supplications and requests as stated in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. So Hannah prayed, and well, guess what happened after she prayed? 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 20 says, Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I ask of him of the Lord. Hannah gave her. Hannah gave her son to God literally, and this points us towards doing the same thing. She had vowed that if she get a son, she will give him back to the Lord to serve. Another principle in the life of the meek is to show gratitude, show thankfulness and praise to God when he has been with us and provided for us through tough times. Hannah promised her future son to God as a priest, and she kept her vow. To demonstrate the depths of her commitment, she committed her boy to God with a Nazarite vow, which can be read in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. According to Jewish tradition, Levite priests served until about the age of 50, Numbers chapter 4, verse 3. Likewise, a Nazarite vow lasted for a limited time, Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. Nevertheless, Hannah made a commitment that went beyond either one. She gave her son back to God for all the days of his life, not just till 50 years old or whatever it may be, but to serve all the years of his life. Tonight, God requires your total commitment. And how do we show total commitment to God? I'll give you four points. One, attend church regularly. Two, read the Bible every day. Three, pray to God daily. And four, talk to Jesus about your life habitually. habitually. Tell Jesus everything about you regularly. Have regular prayer communication and conversation with God day by day. Have faith before disbelief and love Jesus like a brother. Hannah, after thanking God for the blessing of this child, kept her word, and when the child was weaned, along with her husband, she took him to Eli, the high priest. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 11 says, then Elkanah went back home to Ramah, but the boy Samuel stayed in Shiloh and served the Lord under the priest Eli. Take note, it was her only son, her only child at that time, but as she had vowed, she gave him to the service of the Lord God. Like Hannah and Elkanah, 
God gave his only begotten son. The Bible says that God sent his son because he loves us. You see, we are helpless, we are ungodly, we are unholy, we are sinners and enemies of God, but still he loves us, and there should be a big hallelujah. John chapter 3 verse 16 declares, For God so loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. If this text never moved you before as many times as you have heard it, it should move you this time. It should move you now. The son of Hannah became God's mouthpiece, a prophet in Israel. Because of this single act from this meek woman, God opened her womb and she had five more children. Hallelujah. No more provocation, no more mocking and making fun of from Penina. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 21 says, The Lord did bless Hannah, and she had three more sons and two daughters. The boy Samuel grew up in the service of the Lord. So in conclusion, we see that one, Hannah gave her son to serve God. Two, Hannah gave her son to worship God. And three, Hannah gave herself to God. I ask you these three questions as we prepare to close, and you can answer them yourselves. How can you be a mother or father who trusts God with your own children? Number two, how can you be an example to your children of a life worshiping God? And number three, how can you make a commitment to lead your children to serve God? I believe the answer is obvious. Your relationship with God through Christ fuels your trust and commitment. My friends, you too can have this relationship. Hannah trusted God, and because she did, we can apply Matthew chapter 5, verse 5 to this faithful, God-fearing, and humble woman. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. I just want to point out, that's a very wonderful promise. If you are meek, you can inherit the earth made new, where no one will be provoking, miserable, teasing, unbearable. So, how many of you would like to join me in cultivating, receiving this spirit of meekness from God? Please, wherever you are, raise your hands if you want this character through that one word, meekness. Raise your hand wherever you are. God will see it. I might not. Don't worry about me. God sees your hands. So let us seek to follow this disposition of courage and meekness. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for educating us properly about how to be meek. Meek means being, having self-control, love, peace, patience, and so many other wonderful things. Another beautiful thing about being meek is each individual will have less stress because they will have a better understanding of the conditions of life and will handle it more better. Being meek will also improve our health because in God, we would worry less, knowing that God is in control. So help us to be meek, so that we can inherit the earth and be with Jesus for all eternity. To everyone who raised their hands, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.